Welcome to part six of Rover Build. So to start off, let's go back to some old business. So here's this piece of sample polycarbonate with thread locker on it. I tried to get it to do the thing that I know it does, but I was not able to get the thread locker to degrade this. I put some blue on, I put some red on, I even put it on some acrylic just to see if I could get it to do the crazing. But this stuff seems to be pretty inert on these plastics. I know it can do it because I've had it happen before where it just causes the plastic to all crack and craze over. I was not able to replicate it. So just uh, be cautious that this stuff can degrade some plastics. So now on to the rover. In the last episode we roughed out these frame rails and in this episode I will demonstrate how to do some simple layout. Uh, these are my original shop drawings that I made many years ago um, in true pencil sketch and I have transmuted them into real drawings using my favorite program, Draft Sight, uh, made by the same people that make SolidWorks. It is the competition to AutoCAD. It's a pretty much copy, dead nuts copy of it, except it's free. So free is good. So this shop drawing has become this kind of a blueprint and I will show you the two methods for uh, turning these prints into real parts. So I drew these up on the computer and printed them out at a one-to-one -one scale. And now I will cut these out and glue them onto the aluminum. Okay, so this one goes on the thick piece, this one goes on the thin piece. So now we'll just use a little bit of glue. Glue stick is easy. Uh, you can also use uh, the uh, 3M spray glue, the 77, that stuff's great. Or uh, even hairspray works in a pinch. So you just kind of line this up with the edges. And the glue stick lets you slide it around just a little bit. Okay, so we have the uh, blueprint overlaid on top of the actual items. So now I'll use this automatic center punch and just put the point right on the crosshairs and push down. Makes a little indentation. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can get them very cheaply at uh, the discount tool store. but. Uh, something sharp like a screw or nail and a whacking object works just as well. You just want a uh, 
small set so that when you drill into this, the drill bit does not wander. So that's all we actually needed the uh, paper template for. On both of these. The glue is actually tacky enough that you could probably just stick it right on the other end. But instead, I will show you another method to do layout. So, method number two is we will take a uh, permanent marker and just shade in roughly the area that we want to mark. And we get a set of calipers from the discount tool store. These are a uh, whopping $10 on sale. And for that price, they actually do a fantastic job. Um, it is kind of a luck of the draw. I've got, I think, three pairs of these. And this one is the, uh, the lamest of the set. As uh, sometimes when you push on the battery compartment, adjusting this, it will reset. And that's very frustrating for actually making real parts. But for this, it works fine. So again, we'll reference back to the drawing. And we see that uh, these holes are right in the center of this bar. So we'll just turn on the caliper, zero it out, dial it open to half an inch, or close enough. And now we use this as a scribe. You just drag it along the one edge, and it scrapes off the black sharpie. It's probably a little hard to see on the camera. It's a little easier to see in real life. Uh, next, the next hole is 0.7 from the edge. So again, zero, zero it out. Dial it open to point. Oh, see, it's being sketchy. No, I don't want metric. Dial it open to point seven. And then again, hold it on the edge and scribe. Uh, that one shows up a little better. And then the last one is going to be... And can I go, again, go in with the pointy tool. Now we have uh, one bar with the drill locations center punched. So using a combination of these two techniques, uh, you can lay out very complex uh, designs on flat stock with relatively uh, imprecise tools. So I will just uh, lay out the rest of these off camera and then we'll drill them out on the drill press. Okay, so now these are all marked out with the um, automatic center punch or the uh, nail and hammer technique. We'll go in with a slightly bigger punch and just make the holes, uh, make the sets a little bigger. Nice generous divot for the drill bit to fall right into. Well, now to the drill press. Okay, so I have 3 16th inch drill bit loaded in the drill press, and these pieces are all long enough that uh, I can just support them against the back column. I don't really need to clamp them down, and they've got that generous uh, 
center punch so the drill bit should not wander. So let's just drill these out. Okay, so here are our bars all drilled out. And if I put the pipey clamps on top of them, you can see that the holes are just a little bit offset. Not quite lined up. Well, it's a little worse on this one. However, if I drop a motor in there and drop the clamps over the motor, they spread out just a little bit. And now the holes line up pretty closely. This one springs a little more than the other. And... Yeah. So that's the uh, fabrication on the motor mounts. Uh, next is just a 12 inch by 12 inch chunk of half inch plywood and you just lay the bars uh, right on top of that and drill through the holes through the plywood deck and then put the bolts through tighten everything down put the wheels on the motor shafts and major fabrication is basically done on to the next step wiring oh yes I guess we need to go shopping as well